So on August 28th, 2021, some guy called Elon Musk, who obviously doesn't know anything about anything, referring to the insane SPAC attack, wrote this. I thought 1999 was peak insanity, but 2021 is a thousand percent more insane. And some extremely offensive guy with three first names posted this. It appears to be an IQ bell curve with some additional labels, 1999, seeming to suggest some slight brain damage. 2021, relatively severe brain damage and Nikola stock investors are some of the dumbest motherfuckers on planet Earth. If anyone, by the way, is wondering what my IQ is, it's about 69. Now, why is it? that I would post something so incredibly offensive to people who were purchasing Nikola stock. The reason, a couple of years later, almost to the day, we have our answer. That Elon Musk guy seemed to agree with this, responding pretty much. So how did we get here? In this video, this bell curve is coming to life. I continue to bat 1000 and both Lucid and Nikola appear completely and utterly, and I mean completely and utterly. F the probability of each of these companies going bankrupt within the next five years in my opinion, is now approximately 96.90420690420%. But remember, I have an IQ of 69, so don't take anything I say seriously. All my prior predictions have just been pure luck. After all, someone's got about a thousand just by pure coincidence and luck, right? <laughs> now, just for the record, downfall of Nikola is something I've discussed at length over on Patreon, as you guys can see here. And pro tip, if you don't already know on Patreon, you can search by tags. 14 individual videos have been posted discussing Nikola exclusively to Patreon. So too, a load of videos specifically on the downfall of Lucid. Fraud, huh? Geez, I wonder what those fraud tags have to do with. Well, you'll just have to join Patreon to find out. For those who don't know, I continue to cover the downfall of many Legacy Automotive manufacturers and EV startups exclusively on Patreon. If you'd prefer to support the channel over on X, formerly Twitter, you can also subscribe for a load of exclusive content there as well. 35 exclusive videos and counting, including more coverage of the inevitable demise of many EV startups and legacy automotive companies. Here's a quick sample. Posted this one a few months ago. Lucid equals fucked. But don't worry, the CEO has a British accent. Another one, the Grim Reaper comes for Nikola. And another, EV startup collapse underway. Nikola, Lucid, Rivian, Fraudstown, all in big trouble. Another one, bites the dust, this time Faraday Future. So click the links in the pinned comment to subscribe over on X and over on Patreon or don't. So we're currently on the Tesla website, the homepage, the splash page, if you will. And it's always easy to understand what a company is trying to emphasize, what their goal is on their website based on the things that we can see on the very first page. For example, it's very clear right now, Tesla is trying to make sure that every customer in the United States knows there is a $7,500 federal tax credit, which is available for new Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. Tesla also emphasizing that there could be reductions to this tax credit likely at the end of the year. The second thing is the ability to schedule a demo drive, because as people know, as we know, once you go Tesla, you don't go back. Bums in seats equals vehicles sold. Tesla knows this. Tesla knows their products are so good they'll sell themselves. I just need you to drive one, try it out, and you'll be sold. So with that in mind, let's head over to the Lucid website. Try to determine if there's anything they're trying to emphasize at this point in time. Bam, right up the top. Unfortunately, their premium, luxury, high-end vehicles aren't eligible for tax credits, but you can now lease a Lucid starting at $749 per month for 36 months. Not only that, but they've doubled down on this offer. There's a banner along the top of the website. And also, a new feature here, scrolling through the different variations, the different lease prices per month. 36 month lease available on this, that, and the other model of our vehicles. Interesting. Why such a heavy emphasis on leasing a lucid vehicle? Now, call me crazy, but if you're a company that produces vehicles that are six figures plus to purchase, would you prefer to sell those vehicles to customers or to be leasing them to customers for 36 months. Just asking the question here. Maybe we can do some math on this. The most expensive lease we just saw there was $13.99 per month. So let's do the math on this, right? $13.99 times 36 months equals $50,364. So think about that for a moment. If as a customer, you decide to lease the most expensive Lucid vehicle right now, over 36 months, the total payments on that over the 36 month period, just over $50,000, which is give or take about what it'll cost you to buy a Tesla Model Y. Technically a little bit less, but let's not be a poindexter here. Now the cheaper lease, 749, over 36 months is a mere 26,000, let's just round it up to $27,000. So the question, 
Would you prefer $27,000 to $50,000 in lease payments spread out over 36 months or would you prefer to sell your six-figure vehicle for six plus figures? I guess the next logical question would be, why would Lucid be so intent on encouraging customers not to purchase their vehicles but instead to lease one? And by the way, I'm not going to lie, $749 a month to lease a Lucid vehicle is a fucking deal. So let's try to do our best apples to apples comparison. As we can see here with the Air Grand Touring, purchase price $125,600 with a $10,899 lease down payment. I've now specced up the Model X with an equivalent amount due at signing. And just for the record, this includes the $15,000 optional FSD software package to get to the purchase price. Otherwise, we're not even close to apples to apples, but I had to get to around that $124,000, $123,000 purchase price amount. So I've now spec'd up a Model X, approximately the same purchase price and approximately the same amount due at signing. Estimated lease payment on this vehicle, $1,739 per month on a 36 month lease. But Lucid, almost identical purchase price, almost identical amount down at the signing of the lease is just $1,399 per month. About 20% cheaper to lease a Lucid vehicle than a Tesla, once again. That's quite a deal. So what the actual fuck is going on? Well, let's rewind the clock just a little bit. This was February 2023. Lucid's reservation backlog as of February 21st is around 28,000 down from 34,000 on November 7th. But deliveries in Q4 were only 1,932. Well, we don't know the delivery number yet for Q1. Reservations seem to be disappearing at a faster rate than deliveries are happening. Not good. A couple of months later in May, Here's a link to the full Lucid Earnings slide deck. They are no longer disclosing how many reservations they have. <laughs> Red flag alert. Isn't that interesting? Why would you stop disclosing how many reservations you have for your vehicles when a couple of months ago you were disclosing them? Oh, that's right. Because people were noticing <laughs> that your reservations was going down a lot faster than the number of vehicles delivered and going, uh, what's happening? Are people cancelling orders? Hello, what's going on here? So yeah, you may as well just uh, sweep this one under the rug, right? Just stop mentioning reservations and no one will notice. And now, as we know, a few months later, Lucid has launched new discount and lease offers for August. There are discounts about 7,000 for the Air Pure and 15 to 20,000 on the Air Touring and Grand Touring. And again, very competitive lease options. We ain't done yet. This is a nice little summary. Lucid has dropped prices by up to 18.8%. The Air Pure, all wheel drive, now 82,400 down from 87,000. The Air Touring, now 95,000, previously 108,000. And the Air GT, now 125,000, previously 154,000. These are some big ass discounts. Now remember, unlike Tesla, who are making industry leading profit margins, close to 20%, give or take, and this is despite incredible economic headwinds, which other companies, shout out to Lucid and many others are starting to discover, are no fucking joke. Lucid are losing money on every vehicle sold, a substantial amount of money on every vehicle sold. So now they're losing even more per vehicle sold. I wonder how this ends. Now for the sake of comparison, that Air GT, previously 154, now 125,000, let's do the best comparison we possibly can and compare that to a high-end Model S Plaid. So here we have it. Tesla's Model S Plaid now, $108,490. Not that far off. Now remember, the Tesla does not have woolly mammoth pubes in the stitching of the seats or any unicorn tears in the wiper fluid. Tesla vehicles are not luxury vehicles. They are premium vehicles, but they are not luxury vehicles. As I record this, the highest end Lucid vehicle now is just about 15% more than Tesla's Model S Plaid. You would hope that a company like Lucid would be able to charge a much greater premium for their premium luxurious vehicles, but apparently not. And if we contrast that with the entry level Model S, the dual motor all wheel drive at $88,490, the closest equivalent, the Air Pure all wheel drive, $82,400. So hold up a minute. You're telling me we can now get a Lucid vehicle for less than the cheapest Tesla Model S? That's right. I'm not quite sure if Lucid were planning on a race to the bottom here, but as we can see, it appears that Lucid are somewhat struggling to actually sell vehicles to the point where not only are they doing massive pricing discounts when they literally cannot afford to do so, but they're now so desperate to move through vehicles they've produced that they're offering 36 month leases. Great, extremely competitive 36 month leases. Now, why might they be doing that? Well, uh, speculation alert. My hypothesis is maybe Lucid are a little bit concerned about going bankrupt in the next few years and they're trying to buy themselves a little bit more runway. Hey guys, look, don't worry. Those vehicles that 
people aren't buying anymore. Look, we, we can, they're, they're the least now, it's, everything's fine. Hey, look over there, a distraction. One final tweet on this topic before we move on. Five months ago, Lucid apparently had 28,000 plus reservations. Since then, Lucid has delivered 2,810 vehicles. 90% of the reservations have mysteriously disappeared. Every variant of the Lucid Air is now available. Nobody is waiting for their pre-order. The reservations data was deleted from the most recent quarterly results. And as we know, Lucid is now offering an $84,000 vehicle and leases for $750 per month. This is what desperation smells like. How long will the Saudis keep this one going before pulling a plug on the life support? It's a good question there, Sasha. The final thing I'd like to look at is available cars on the Lucid website. And this isn't perfect, but let's just see what the wait times are on these vehicles. We're going to go first with the Grand Touring. Available in two weeks. 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 I think you get the point. Let's look at the next one. How about the Touring Edition? Anyone want to guess how this pans out? Available in two weeks. Available in two weeks. Available in two weeks. Available in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. You get the fucking point. And finally, how about the pure? No prizes for guessing. Available in two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. What this suggests to me is essentially instantaneous delivery of vehicles purchased and or leased from Lucid. Obviously, there's a little bit of time, paperwork, they're at the factory, they need to end up in the customer's driveway. You probably don't want to be individually shipping a single vehicle on a semi-trailer. You'd probably prefer to have a full trailer, so you might want to have a little bit of a buffer there so a few more orders and or leases can come through before you deliver these things, right? That'd be about two weeks. I think, ladies and gentlemen, this may be the final nail in the coffin for Lucid. And I really do mean that. It appears, based on all evidence, the customers are cancelling their reservations left, right and centre to the point where Lucid are embarrassed to and therefore no longer disclosing these publicly in their earnings reports. Big red flag. The first thing you see on the Lucid website now, the banner across the top, Lease the Lucid Air from $7.49 per month. And as I mentioned, not only that, they double down on this. Not only do we have the banner across the top of the website, but the only thing we see here, lease, lease, lease. Notice it also says apply by August 31st. Quite the time pressure, isn't it? And if we scroll down on the homepage again, leases, leases, leases. So it turns out, what was that thing that that guy said who doesn't know anything about anything? Oh, that's right. Production is hard. We see Lucid has done some excellent engineering. Lucid vehicles don't particularly float my boat. But then again, I think most vehicles are butt-ass ugly and I've always kind of laughed at people that try to signal status or make up for their small dick or short stature with a vehicle. But great engineering and a potentially compelling product will only get you so far. And there's a company out there who have such compelling products, they're so good they sell themselves and they're driving prices down, forcing the hand of everyone else in the industry. In addition, when you're a company trying to scale up production, which once again is actually hard, you end up in a situation like this, where a high-end luxury premium automotive manufacturer are now heavily discounting their vehicles and desperately attempting to get customers to lease them over 36 months to buy themselves a little bit more runway before their inevitable bankruptcy. In my opinion, I think the end is near for Lucid Motors. But don't worry, it's not all bad. There is hope. Not every electric vehicle manufacturer or alleged electric vehicle manufacturer is going bankrupt, as we can see here. Smooth sailing for Nikola. Quote, Nikola shares plummet 26% as electric truck maker names fourth CEO in four years. Obviously, this is a really good sign. Four CEOs in four years. This is obviously an indicator that the company's growing so fast that they just need to hire a new CEO who's capable of leading this much larger, more successful company year after year, right? <laughs> Nikola lost more than a quarter of its market value on Friday after the US electric truck maker named its fourth CEO in as many years and reiterated for the third time this year its doubts about continuing as a going concern. Just in case you guys and girls aren't familiar with the jargon, in fact, many of you won't be unless you've heard this before in this channel. In this context, when you hear a company with doubts about its continuing as a going concern, this is code for, we are going bankrupt unless something miraculous happens. Brace for fucking impact. The news came a day after shareholders approved a plan to issue more stock to bolster much needed cash despite worries of dilution, as Phoenix-based Nikola navigates lingering supply chain snags and a pivot to hydrogen fuel cell technology. So much for their Real, real trucks that weren't pushes. You know, the electric ones with the physics-defying energy density as proclaimed by Trevor Meltdown Milton. The company said chairman Stephen Gursky, a former government motors executive, will immediately take over from their current CEO, who is stepping down due to a family health matter. 
Well, I hope everything's okay with Michael's family there. This certainly isn't an excuse. Totally legitimate. Nicholas Investors on Thursday approved a proposal that will allow the company to issue more shares. It needs $600 million to execute its business plan, but it will not be entirely dilutive. Equity Capital, Gursky said on a call with reporters. Before Friday's 26.4% fall, I mean, literally losing a quarter of their market cap in a single day, closing at $2.50. Nikola's share price had soared nearly 60% this year. Further proof that the bell curve is real. Nikola flagged, quote, substantial doubts about its ability to continue as a going concern for the next 12 months reiterating its warning for the third time since February as it awaits, quote, critical additional capital. Now, look, I'm just going to be honest here. If there's people today buying Nikola stock aware of these facts, as in they're literally saying the company themselves are like, hey, guys, we're probably going bankrupt. We are very concerned that we're going bankrupt in the next 12 months. Hello, we're going to need to raise a shitload of capital. We're probably going bankrupt. After years ago, the company's founder and previous CEO, Trevor Meltdown Milton, was making fraudulent claims to investors, lying, misleading, deceiving, left, right, and center. I mean, it was a sight to behold. I made 30 plus videos on this motherfucker and the lies, pointing it out, roasting all the dumb fucks buying this stock. If anyone today is still buying the stock in this company with a belief that they're likely to see a return on this investment, thinking that they're investing as opposed to being in the stock's casino, these people are too stupid to be investing, period. And I don't mean this in jest. I actually literally mean this. Unfortunately, There is no intellectual, emotional intelligence test at all before investors are allowed to part with their hard-earned cash to buy stocks that are publicly traded. I'm not saying there should be. I'm just pointing out that even if you're the dumbest motherfucker on the planet, you are allowed to buy Nikola stock. And I personally believe that we are seeing, as evidenced by Nikola stock having surged 60% this year, meaning a lot of buying activity, we are seeing clear evidence that one very far end of the intelligence bell curve is piling into this company, despite there being more red flags than a Chinese Communist Party rally. I just don't understand what these people are doing. Neither do they. And that's the point. Rest in f***ing peace, your hard-earned capital. And the worst thing of all, I'm just going to be honest here. Generally speaking, the dumber you are, the harder it is for you to earn income in the first place. Okay, we're just being honest here. I know it's not a nice thing to say, but it's true. Dim people are playing life on hard mode. They have a hard enough time earning income, keeping a job, looking after their health, housing themselves, putting food on the table. These are the people who can least afford to vaporize their capital, and that is exactly what is going to happen, in my obnoxious opinion. Nikola flagged, quote, substantial doubts about its ability to continue. Shares were also dragged by a downbeat current quarter revenue forecast. The maker of the Trey model electric trucks has decided to make battery electric trucks only to order and focus on hydrogen full cell trucks. Now think about this. So much for out Eloning Elon. Nikola have in essence abandoned their electric vehicle truck plans. They're now only making them to order. Why would this have happened? Oh, that's right, because of the Tesla Semi. Tesla has now produced a category-killing vehicle, an electric semi, with incredible range. There is no competition. There are some electric semis out there, but their range sucks harder than a fucking vacuum. There is nothing close to the Tesla Semi, period. This is like the Model S all over in 2012. Tesla has this entire category to themselves for probably the next half decade or more. So now Nikola have pivoted to focus predominantly on hydrogen full cell trucks, which is, in my opinion, an obvious dead end. The company laid off 270 employees in June and liquidated assets of a recently acquired battery maker last month. Nikola forecasts third quarter revenue of $18 million to $28 million, compared with estimates of $34.5 million. Now, just to put this in context, because $18 to $28 million might sound like a lot, but for a company that was previously valued at multiple billions of dollars, this is nothing. I'm sure yesterday, in 10 rounds, Jake Paul made more money attempting to beat up a retired MMA fighter. Yeah, that's right. A celebrity YouTube boxer made more money in half an hour yesterday than Nikola is forecast to make in the entire third quarter. Just to put that in context, the company said it expects 300 to 400 deliveries this year, up from between 250 and 350 it projected earlier. Other electric vehicle startups have also toiled to ramp up production. Hmm, it's almost as if production is hard. Meet delivery targets and raise funds as cash reserves dwindled. Supply chain delays forced EV maker Anal F- F- oh sorry I misread that Fisk Er to slash its annual production target on Friday. Nikola, which also flagged supply bottlenecks, had cash and cash equivalents of 226.7 million at the end of the second quarter, compared with 441.8 million a year earlier. So let's do the math on this, ladies and gentlemen. Really roughly, Nikola's burning about 226 million per year and 
They've only got 226 million left. So 12 months from now, yeah, nothing to see here. Move along. Everything's going to be fine. All in Nicola stock. Uh, Nicola this summer adjourned and rescheduled its shareholder meeting twice. <laughs> Never a good sign. To build support for the share issuance among investors worried, oh, by the way, this was hilarious. They're literally running ads and campaigns trying to convince their shareholders to approve being diluted to raise more capital. Worried it would dilute their stakes. The move was also opposed by founder Trevor Meltdown Milton, who stepped down in 2020 after fraud allegations and was later convicted. Hope you're doing well, Trevor. Separately, Nikola reported a narrower second quarter loss as lower production of its Trey battery electric truck in the April-June period helped keep costs in check. Now look, it's not like anyone could possibly have seen these inevitable bankruptcies coming. It's not like production is hard. It's not like prototypes are easy. It's not like Tesla was already in a dominant, dare I say, unassailable lead so far ahead and moving faster than any other company that no company had a chance of catching up to them, let alone exceeding them. Just out of interest, let's see what's happened. Peak insanity to the present moment on Nikola's stock. On the 19th of June, 2020, Nikola's stock closed at $65.00. And 90 cents per share. It's now officially down from that point, 96.2%. Lucid, from its peak price, 19th of November 2021, $55.21, down to $6.62, a collapse of 88%. Once again, of course, it's not like anyone could possibly have seen this coming. What are we doing here? Nicola, I'm concerned, three years ago. Nicola founders fraud trial. Nicola, more questions than answers. Nicola, a warning to investors. Three years ago, danger. Is Nicola Badger a fake truck to manipulate the stock? Nicola desperately trying to hide the truth. Red flag. Lies exposed. Nicola lied. Badger cancelled and Trevor gets screwed over. Nicola stock. Pump and dump. Investor warning. The downfall of Nicola. Badger gone. Deceit remains. Red flag. I'm mad. Analyst says buy Nicola stock. Oh, wow. Jesus. Who was this dumb fuck? Nicola. Two years ago, the walls are closing in. Trevor Milton hides spies to expose whistleblower. Nicola, Q3 2020 results spell doom. Investor warning. Nicola found a Trevor Milton scamming people since 2006. Short seller exposes another EV SPAC. Obviously, that was a coincidence. It's not like there'd be any videos warning investors about Lucid either. Or recycling thumbnails. <clears throat> Lucid fucks investors hard again. Did they mislead? Five months ago, Lucid Motors in big trouble. Four months ago, Lucid on verge of bankruptcy. Two years ago, is Lucid Motors doomed? Elon warns Lucid and Rivian are headed for bankruptcy. One year ago. Two years ago. Hmm, two years ago. It's roughly at the peak of the insanity on Lucid stock. Warning, Lucid Motors, big red flags. One year ago, Lucid's Q2 disaster. 11 months ago, Lucid screws investors. So as you can see, no one could possibly have seen this coming. It's not like there are videos that correlate almost directly with the peak insanity on these stonks and some dickhead on YouTube repeatedly warning people obnoxiously, red flags, hello, they're doomed, going bankrupt, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. So if there are any investors who purchased Lucid stock or Nikola stock and happen to have vaporized almost all of their capital, don't worry, it's not your fault. You're not a dumbass. It was totally bad luck. There were no warning signs whatsoever. You're a really smart investor. And if there was a test for intelligence, to intellectual and emotional before investing in the stock market, you would certainly pass with flying colours. So in conclusion, everything's fine. There's nothing to see here. Don't worry. Lucid definitely aren't going bankrupt. Nicola definitely aren't going bankrupt. And I'd just like to formally apologise for the dozens upon dozens upon dozens of videos I posted over the last three years, seeming to suggest that there were red flags with both Lucid and Nicola and that both companies appeared likely to go bankrupt. I guess I should also apologize for all the exclusive Patreon videos I covered in detail on these same companies as well, also seeming to suggest they're inevitably doomed. And I guess I should also apologize for the exclusive X slash Twitter videos that I've been posting in recent months, also detailing the inevitable demise of these companies. I was definitely just joking in those videos anyway. I wasn't serious and it's just a pure coincidence that it appears now that I'm going to be right. Once again, don't ever believe anything I ever say about anything. So yeah, Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. 
I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point and something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro. When I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. You get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link in the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link in the pinned comment, See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.